Hi, this is Marwan, and this here is going to be our first video about SAT problems. Now, we know that SAT now is divided into heart of algebra, problem solving and data analysis, passport to advanced math, and additional topics. So there are four main um, divisions of the SAT. The SAT has 58 questions for math part, and 17 of those about problem solving and data analysis. So actually I'm gonna try to start with that because if you get how to solve a problem, then that will make it a lot easier for you. Algebra is more obvious than problem solving. So we're gonna start with problem solving now. Now the first concept in problem solving that is um, common in the, RC, uh, the SAT is the percent. We did make another video about percent that has the basics if you are not really sure on how to solve percent problems, so you can go back to this one, to the previous one. I'll make sure to link it for you um, during the video and in the end screen of this video. Now let's look at our first question here. It says if A is a positive number and 400% of A is what percent of 400 A? Now this looks confusing, but if you break it, it will look much better. When we say 400%, what does that mean? Well, 400% is 400 over 100, right? Which is actually four. So if we say 400% of A, this means 4A. If it's 200% of X, it means 2X. So this is one of the things that should be obvious for you. Once you see 400% of a number, it means four times that number. So once we know what this value is, the rest of the question is gonna be easy. 400% of A is what percent of 4A? So I'm gonna go back to the original basic rule that I use. Now 4A here is the part and 400A is the whole, okay? Now 400A represents the whole because it's after off. We discussed that in a previous video, you can go back to that. And what is missing is the percent, how much is that? Now, if you cross multiply, you will find that X is equal to 4A multiplied by 100, and that's for over 400A. When you simplify, you will end up with one. So the answer for this question is one, which is choice B. Now, let's look at another question. This second question here says, during his second week on a job, Jason earned $110. This represents a 25% increase over his earnings of the previous week. How much did he earn during his first week? Now, we agreed that using cross multiplication to solve percent problems is at most the easiest way to solve. The information in the question says that he earned 110 in his second week. So that is after the change, right? So we always have before, that's before the change, regarding, regardless the change is an increase or a decrease, and we have after the change. Before the change, how much money did he make? We have no idea. So this is Rex. What you start with is the 100%. So before is the 100%. Then when we increase, we add to that 100. X is 100%, 110 is that 100 plus the 25%, which makes 125. Again, plus because it's an increase. When you cross multiply, you will get that X is equal to, ignore the percentage of course, 110 multiplied by 100 over 125. Solving this, you will know that he made $88 in his first week. So your answer for this question is C. Let's look at another question. Now this question here says, on a test consisting of 80 questions, Mary answered 75% of the first 60 questions. So how much is that? Now 75% of 60 is 45. So this part here means 45 questions. That's for this part. Now what percent of the 20 questions did she need to answer correctly, the remaining 20, for her uh, grade on the entire exam to be 80%. Now, how does she get an 80% on the exam? We need to know that she gets an 80% on the entire exams if 80% of the whole exam is correct, right? 
So she needs 80% of the 80 questions to be correct, which is 64 questions, right? Now she needs 64 to be correct. She already have 45 correct. So you need to know how much is left for her. 64 minus 45 is 19. So out of the 20 questions remaining, she needs 19 to be correct. But the question did not ask you about how many questions are left for her to solve to be correct. It asked you about the percentage. So all you need to do is actually find out what is 19 out of 20 as a percent and you will get in this case that x is equal to 95. So this is another question was the answer C. Again, what did we do here? Overall, the test is 80 questions. She needs to get a score of 80%. Then she needs, when you find what's 80% of 80, you will know that she needs 64 questions to be correct. When she solved the first part, the 60 questions, she got 75% of them correct, which is 45 questions. How much more questions does she need to be correct? You subtract, she needs 19. But what did they ask you for? They asked you for the percentage. This is why you found what is 19 out of the 20 questions remaining as a percentage, and you got 95%. Now, let's do one more question. It says here, at Harris Discount, hardware, every, um, at Harris Discount hardware, everything is sold for 20% less than the price marked. So if the price mark is 100, they sell it for 20% less, which is 80. Now, if Harry buys two kits for $80, this is the price he pays to get the two kit. What price should he mark them if he wants to make 20% profit on his cost? Now, let's break this a little. I'm going to actually not start from the beginning. I'm going to start from this part. Now, Harry bought it for 80%. He wants to make 20% profit. So how much does he need to sell it for? He needs to sell it. Now, this is $80. This is the price. How much he wants to sell it for, we don't know yet. Now, he wants to make a profit of 20. So if what he started with is 100, this is 120. You're going to cross multiply you'll get that x is equal 120 times 80 over 100, <coughs> which is $96. Now, he wants to sell it for $96, but this is not what they're asking you for. He did not ask you how much does he want to sell it for. They are asking you what price should he mark them. So the tag, on the tag, how much should be the price? Now, how do I get that? I know he wants to sell it for 96, right? The first part tells you that everything is sold for 20% less than the price marked. So if the price marked was 100, it's going to be sold for 20% less, which is 100 minus 20. This is 80%, right? So the $96 that he needs to buy should be 80% of the price he puts on the tag. Again, you cross multiply, you are going to get that x is equal to 96 times 100 over 80, and your answer is going to be $120. Now, I want you to notice that when they do the SAT, they will give you the answer of one of the steps. You will think that you're done. Unfortunately, you won't. So you need to make sure that you read the question very well, you break it into pieces, and see how to start with it. If you want to take another look at this, everything is marked in his store for a price, but it is sold for 20% less. So what we needed was the price on the tag. If we know that he needs to sell it for 96%, then this is, sorry, $96, this is 80% of the marked price or the price that he needs to write on the tag. 
Now, I hope solving these four questions helped you understand the type of questions you get to see in the SATs. If you have questions that you're practicing related to percent and you don't know how to solve them, feel free to post them for me in the comments and I'll try my best to help you and tell you what the answer is. I'm going to put for you here uh, in this page the link for the basics or the basic questions related to percent if you don't know that and hopefully we are going to do more um, videos that are related to the problem solving and data analysis in the SAT. Thank you so much for watching.